So now that we've talked about uh, the strategy is an end result of owning properties unencumbered uh, so that you can receive that unencumbered income being the rent, let's talk about the different types of properties that are going to need to be in this portfolio. Now it's no secret uh, that we tend to favour those affordable corridors of different states and there's a few reasons for that. One is it gives us the flexibility to morph with the market. Now, if I fast forward or reverse to a market that we have today, uh, being that lending is very, very tight, if I base my whole portfolio on, we'll call a blue chip uh, property types that are perhaps the potentially higher growing properties, uh, but a lower income, so a lower yield, I'd be in all sorts of trouble at this moment in time because I can't get finance for it. Now, if I take, and I'm not saying that our strategy is the only strategy because you do need a mix of these properties within your portfolio, but if I take properties that are perhaps of the affordable uh, characteristics where the income perhaps is a little bit tire, still based in very strong fundamentally uh, growth areas, but if we take these affordable properties, we cover our risk via the number of assets that we have. We cover our risk in terms of a worst case scenario. Now this is really important because as a market or, or an economy shrinks and interest rates go up, uh, we need to know that we can hold our properties. Now you often hear us saying that if we go back to the worst financial economy that we've ever lived through, especially in recent years being the GFC, no one lost their properties because of lack of equity. They lost them because of lack of cash flow. They didn't have the ability to be able to hang on and, and pay the mortgage and therefore the banks took over. Now that is a worst case scenario, albeit. But we need to know that our strategy when investing in property is not just uh, terrific in an area or at a time of strong economic growth or, or strong property growth because that's a given. You could just about do any type of strategy in those types of markets and it'll be okay. But the, the rubber hits the road when the market is actually low, when it's soft. How will that property perform during that market is where the gold is. So when we create this strategy, once again, we end the strategy with an unencumbered property or an unencumbered portfolio. And how we get there will be different types of properties at different stages of the creation of the portfolio. So in the beginning, we might be talking about solid growth areas with solid relevant cash flow, um, with the ability to perhaps add value as the years go on. But as the investor, as the portfolio becomes more sophisticated, we look for different property types. So we might be starting to land bank some opportunities in terms of potential development as the future unwinds. Or we might be looking at small blocks of units that when the time comes to retire debt that we could perhaps strata subdivide or, or prepackage the development and sell, yes I said sell, so that we can take the profits and the proceeds to pay down some of that other debt. Because after all we want the portfolio to be unencumbered. We're not believers in this inflection point of rent will cover all costs at some time or another because it will, but a lot of people tend to think that well, this inflection point of rent covering all costs will be at year four or seven or the like. And I'm just not a believer in that because nothing is consistent in terms of growth, not when it just comes to capital growth, but also income growth. So you need to budget a worst case scenario. And if you're waiting on that inflection point with a high valued asset and a low valued uh, or a low income base, you're going to be really holding your, breath, your, your hopes and your breath for that, pot, that point of inflection to come. So we want to create this portfolio where we might have some assets that are potentially growing a little faster than others, but we also want to complement the portfolio with some still strong growth areas and property types, but they need to have solid cash flow, pigeon pair if you will, or the ability to be able to create extra cash flow. So in closing, make sure that you treat the portfolio like a business. So every property has a reason to be there, whether it be for growth predominantly, or whether it be for cash flow, or maybe even a land banking opportunity. So the bottom line is, look at the bottom, look at the numbers all the time. The bottom line numbers will never lie. After all, you're reviewing the portfolio constantly. Anybody can get into a property very quickly, and that's not the that's not the hard part. The hard part is actually managing that portfolio when you're in a period of consolidation. 
So the numbers never lie. Make sure you look after the bottom line and you'll be good for the long run.